Today, I'm talking to Simon Coleman, CEO of The Liability Company. Many of you know Simon for various reasons, of which one is Judge Dredd. But let's move one step back from that. Simon, it's an absolute honor to chat to you. And I think today is a fairly informal chat between us um, where you will just update us on your journey. So first of all, um, you had a good break after you left your previous employer um, and then an amazing opportunity came over your path. Please share your journey with us. Yeah, thanks, Rianette. Uh, it is kind of weird <laughs> us talking like this because normally when we chat, um, we're firing someone or interviewing someone on The Apprentice. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to doing that again uh, in the next couple of months. Um, yeah, this journey, when I resigned from my corporate job, uh, and and I loved I loved my corporate job. It was really uh, sort of the pinnacle of my career, uh, to be honest. It was very difficult to leave uh, a company where I was so happy and and I worked with some really amazing people. But I, I guess you know when I turned fifty, which is a couple of years ago now, <laughs> uh, I felt like I felt like I, I needed to. If, if I was going to do something on my own, it had to be now. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have the luxury of of the long runway where I could still make a decision later. And I, I just didn't see myself retiring um, in a corporate job, even though it was extremely comfortable and and rewarding. Um, so, yeah, I decided I was going to I was going to start uh, a UMA in the field that I I've been in for over 30 years, which was a liability business. And uh, and then at the same time, my wife, Christelle, who I know everyone knows as well, she was setting up her UMA. And she kept saying to me, it takes so long to kind of get all the regulatory things in place. And I guess it was at that point that I thought, you know, the ideal for me would actually be if I could buy a business that already had these things in place and and i had had a chat um a couple of years before my, my good friend ken van sweden um he uh, regrettably passed away in in two in in 2021 uh, during the pandemic but he and i we worked together on and off at different companies um and we stayed in touch and a few years ago, we were just joking around one night and it was like, you know what we should do? We should start a UMA, you know, like like just just doing it like we used to do it in the old days. And uh, yeah, I didn't have the courage to leave my corporate job. He did. Um, and he ended up starting this company called Liability Matters. And just as it was starting to get traction, um, yeah, he passed away. And it was it was just such a tragedy. Liability Matters was the name of, of the business, uh, and it was a cool, catchy name. Uh, just after he passed away, um, some of the other partners in the business reached out to me and, and wanted to know if, if I could kind of step in and help them keep it going. And I explained that I'd just taken on a new role in my job, um, and I also had quite a lengthy um, restraint. Um, so I just couldn't parachute in and you know, take up the reins uh, in a new business, even though it was very appealing. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't do anything about it. Uh, and then I decided uh, last year, uh, around about sort of February, actually, that I needed to, I, I needed to do something. I was getting very itchy uh, in the corporate space. And uh, by June, I had decided to resign. Uh, I must say, though, I didn't I didn't know that I was going to be taking over liability matters at the time. Uh, in, in fact, I knew that I was going to be setting up a UMA, but I, I didn't really have a plan, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and, and I think that's something that, you know, maybe happens in the entrepreneurial space. You, you just know that you're going to do something, but you haven't quite figured it all out. And maybe that's what stopped me from doing it earlier. I thought that I had to have a plan and it really needed to be crafted in every way. And and I didn't, I didn't have it. Um, 
And then, you know, I was on gardening leave and enjoying the fact that I wasn't working. Don't let anyone ever tell you <laughs> that sitting at home and doing nothing for nine months is unpleasant <laughs> because <laughs> it's really pleasant. <laughs> you know, I hope to be able to do it again sometime. Um, but it gave me a lot of time to think. And then, uh, yeah, Alan McDonough, who's the other partner in, in Liability Matters, uh, we started talking again uh, towards the end of my restraint. And, yeah, we, we started putting a plan together and, and I joined the business uh, on the 1st of July. Uh, it was very important to me to rename it uh, because I felt like I needed to own it. Um, you know, taking over the shareholding was one part of it, but but owning the business, uh, you know, meant I needed to put my own personal brand into it. Uh, and the liability company was was something that I'd had in mind uh, for quite some time, long before I, before I left my corporate job. Uh, someone said to me at a function the other night, "Oh, it's the liability guy from the liability company." <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I, I may rebrand myself as the liability company guy, just to <laughs> simplify things. Um, but but yeah, um, so so we we decided to rebrand the business. Uh, the FSCA was really great about it, um, and I managed to change the name um, in uh, in October. And uh, Debbie Fleischer, who's the other partner in the business, she's actually the one that kept it going uh, after Ken passed away. Mm -hmm. um, she's still with us uh, in the business. She's the underwriting director. Um, and then we just started hiring people. It's, it's so nice to do this, um, you know, to, to kind of interview and get good people in. So we would have gone from two people up to uh, seven um, by January. Wow. Yeah. Um, really like bringing in some some talented people. I'm still on the hunt for for talent. I've I've still been interviewing people, uh, and and yeah. So it's it's in my space where I do what I love to do, which is engage with brokers and and talk and talk liabilities. Uh, so so like I'm I'm really happy, <laughs> you know. And then something amazing happened. Yeah, um, well, well, that that actually. So, I mean, I don't know when this will be broadcast, but but the announcement was was made uh, th this morning, um, and uh, that that was also just. I know you know if you if you look at the you can see behind me here I've got uh, old mutual insurers branding up and my own, and this is the 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 virtual studio that that we filmed the announcement in. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see the liability company branding uh, behind me, but it's it's a series of concentric circles. Um, it's three circles. Uh, that's not by accident. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about that. Um, the circles are quite symbolic because, uh, you know, if you, if you cut a, a tree, I don't recommend people cut trees down, but if you do and you look at it sort of like a cross section, um, you can kind of see the circles, you know, as with each phase of the growth of 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 the tree. And the center is obviously very important. That's where it all started. Um, and that was Ken, you know, that was Ken's role in in getting this business off the ground. Uh, and then you had a slightly broader circle, and that was where debbie and and uh, Mohammed joined the company and and started sort of building their own circle around that that initial foundation. And then we have the broader circle and, and, you know, this is where I've come into the business. And now, you know, the, the news you're talking about, um, Old Mutual Insure kind of saw us as um, their opportunity to really influence what was happening in the liability insurance space. Um, they've got a massive distribution channel. Um, they're a well-known brand. And uh, yeah, so we, we're going to be working together to deliver specialist insurance products uh, to all of their brokers. Um, we're also getting a lot more insurance capacity. Um, we, we didn't really have enough to be serious players in the corporate space. Um, so we'll be more than doubling our capacity uh, in January. Uh, we're just finalizing a few things there. So I can't really tell you what the number is because... Um, I don't know uh, 100% yet, 
um, and we'll be offering a whole bunch of new products as well. Uh, and of course, with, with the resources that are available within the old mutual insurer stable and, and the old mutual group generally, um, it means that plans that I had for like three years from now, I can bring forward and we can actually start doing them next year. Um, and that'll be, you know, a lot of focus on technology, a lot of broker training, uh, and some really cool products um, that I haven't actually seen in the local market yet. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to spending some time working uh, on those. But I've got to tell you, the most amazing thing for me has been doing underwriting again, um, you know, like actually engaging with brokers. I mean, no disrespect to, to my former employers or any corporate, but often what you find is if someone's good at their job, um, the reward is that you get moved higher up the ladder, but you also get moved further and further away from the stuff the that you really love doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, and, and you get more sucked into like reporting and strategy and, you know, those are very important things, but, but you lose touch with the, the, the stuff that actually makes the business tick, you know, and, and underwriting is, is key to that. <laughs> so first quote I do broker comes back to me and goes like, you are way out of the market. I mean, everyone else is here and you're up here. So I'm like, geez, have I been gone that long? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so the next quote I do, I'm like, I'm looking at my quoting engine and everything and I'm going, okay, I'm going to pitch it here. Broker says, Simon, you're a little on the cheap side. <laughs> so I'm going like, God, I've been gone way too long, you know? So, so I've just been trying to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found the balance quickly, fortunately. Um, so, yeah, I apologize to my opposition if they were like, what is going on with Coleman here? You know, he's kind of here, then he's here. Um, so, but it's, but it's been so exciting and, and rewarding to, to be back in it, you know, and, and I think working with Old Mutual is, is going to make it even more fun and, and exciting for everyone in the team. Yeah, I, I, I think um, that stability is amazing. Uh, I, I just, all I see is a, a puzzle, puzzle pieces that just falls into place so nicely. Um, and for me, I just want to say well deserved for you, Simon. Um, and, you. and I'm very proud of you. And it's really exciting is what you're busy with. But um, while you were talking, I picked up a few things or wanted to just comment on a few things. And one of them was, the fact that you didn't have a plan for me that was quite wow because everyone that um that i spoke to because they know that we often chat and we've got a different link often asked me so what is simon's plans never um simon never told me so i am so i've said that and i and i'm saying it again simon never told me of his plans but in my mind you had a very clear, specific plan in place. So it's actually such a, a good thing that you've said and a good comment you've made and a good lesson for many of us um, is that you don't, don't be stupid. Yes, um, make sure you are, you can sustain and keep yourself going, but you don't have to have a specific plan in place. My kid, um, my youngest, is in matric, and Davi Ruud came to speak to the matrics um, when their year ended. And he said to them, don't try and work out your future um, step by step. Don't try and predict what exactly is going to happen because it's never going to go that way. And I think yours is a prime example of exactly that. Sometimes just trust the system and take the leap of faith because your intentions was good from of why you left um, and what you wanted to do. It was all good intentions. Yeah. And, and I you think know, that's why everything just fell in place so nicely for you. I think you, you, you're right, Rianne, to interpret it that way. But I think the, the cautionary tale for anyone that watches this and goes, OK, I need to just do this and, and fill in the blanks as I go along. Um, what I was able to capitalize on, which I would encourage people to do before they make any of these movements, you know, is that I'd spent a lot of time building my personal brand, um, you know, kind of both within the organizations that I worked in and, and also externally. I mean, my, my role on The Apprentice is 
has just been amazing. Um, you know, it's it's put me in touch with so many people uh, from all walks of life. It's a uh, pleasure. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's and it and all of those things kind of helped because, you know, when I started talking to investors, for instance, you know, it was a case of, okay, well, we know who you are. Um, you know, I didn't have to spend as much time talking about that. Um, and we know what your achievements are because you, we've seen them. Um, so I was able to build on on that asset that I'd built up, you know, in in myself. Um, and and I'm not saying it's the most important thing, or maybe I wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't have it. But but I do think that it it made my my job easier when I was getting started. Now, I mean, we are at the beginning of we're not a startup, but but we are certainly at the beginning of what I think is is a long road, and I'm sure there'll be lots of challenges along the way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm the liability company guy. <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, sure that, that I can handle it, you know, but, but I would encourage people to invest in, in the stuff that they have control over, like their personal brand. Yeah, um, and that links back to our communal journey on the insurance apprentice, because that's a great way for younger people to start with a brand. That's really a space where you can use the platform to build your brand. Look at Christopher, our winner this year. He's using that this platform as being the winner to build on an idea that he had. Um, and he's using that personal brand to just make this bigger and better. For sure. Uh, what a platform uh, to anyone that you know, has a dream to be something, be a recognizable authority or a personality in this, in this industry. It's just the most unbelievable thing. So Simon, you only spoke about the good things. What what was the challenges for you along this whole journey? Um, I, I think, you know, that you get used to the comforts of of corporate. Uh, I worked in a great business where you know you were rewarded and remunerated, you know, above. You know, I never really felt like I deserved. The bonuses and things that I was getting when I was when I was in corporate, but um, it it was just it's comfortable to have that, you know. And and often when you start backing yourself, you have to cut back on those things. So so it wasn't easy um, walking away from that security and 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 the rands and cents. Um, and I, and I'm definitely still not in a position financially that I was in before I decided to do this. But I, but I have a sense that that will come if I do the right things. You know, that, that, was, that was quite challenging. Um, and then, you know, I was surrounded by experts um, when, I, when I worked in, in my corporate job. And, and I could just tap into their knowledge, you know, and, and the stuff that they know. And everyone's so willing to share and, and chip in and do stuff. Uh, and then you're on your own, and and fortunately, I, I have I had Debbie and Mohammed in the business when I started, so that was a great help. But but you don't have like a a PR expert or a legal person that you could just talk to, uh, you know, someone who can just jump in and take over a compliance problem that you're having, you know. So those those have certainly been um, challenges, but but slowly I've started building that capability in the team. Um, and and if I don't have a team member that can do it, I have to do it myself. Um, and that is challenging, especially when you're trying to do quotes and presentations and draft wordings and and all of those things. So so those have those have definitely been been quite tricky. Um, and and I and I tell you, Rianette, before I decided to to step into um, this business. The temptation during my time off to go back into the corporate was so great. You know, the further I was into my my time off, my sabbatical, um, and the closer the date was coming where I'd have to actually start working again, um, the more appealing it was for me just to go back to what was comfortable. It, it was tempting to to go back into corporate uh, the closer I got to D-Day, you know, the day that I, I had mm -hmm. to make a decision. Uh, and I almost did it. 
And while I'm so glad that I didn't, uh, not not that it, it wouldn't have worked out, but I would have lost all of this experience that I'm having now, the ability to create jobs for, it's a small number right now, but another five people, um, you know, just, and doing this business with Old Mutual Insure, you know, all these like just amazing things that have, that have been happening. I keep expecting to wake up, you know, and, and I've, <laughs> I've fallen asleep at the wheel sort of thing, you know, but, <laughs> but it's real. And I, and I'm so grateful, you know, for, yeah, all of this It really is, it's like amazing. So you've, you've, you've mentioned some of the challenges of basically starting your own business, but is there anything UMA related um, that you found a little bit more challenging or a little bit more exciting than necessarily just starting another business, specifically UMA related? Mm. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, you know, the UMA, again, I was blessed, if you like, because the business had already been set up. Um, and And I know from you know, chatting to Cristal that, you know, setting it up from nothing um, has has immense challenges. You know, you've got to really find the right carrier. Uh, that's absolutely critical. Um, and then obviously, if you don't have your own money to put into the business, um, you know, finding somebody that'll help to uh, fund the business, especially in those early years, because you're mm-hmm. probably not going to make any money for a, for a yeah. couple of years. Um, but for me, it was, uh, I mean, the 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 business as it stood, um, we were underwriting and continue to underwrite for mutual and federal risk financing, um, which is great paper, but I'd never been exposed to sell captive stuff before. Um, and, and so I really had to learn how that works. Um, you know, I was much more comfortable in the traditional UMA setup. Uh, yeah. so, so that was, I, I guess, a learning curve uh, for me, there's a lot more regulation in, in insurance now than when I tried to do this in, in the year 2000, um, which was my first go at setting up a UMA. Uh, and that was also like a bit, a little bit like having cold water thrown on me, like, wow, there's like a whole lot of processes here. And I can understand why they're there, but they could be a deterrent for somebody that's just thinking about, about getting started. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, largely it's it's been a it's been a a pretty a pretty stable journey. Uh, and I must also tell you, you know, having good reinsurers that back you, uh, that's so important. Our reinsurers and our reinsurance brokers, so it's the guys at Resilia, um, Yanni and the team, uh, Swiss Re, RNV Re. I mean, these are big businesses that said. They, even though Ken had passed away, they would continue to support the UMA. And and in this day and age when, you know, maybe the numbers count for more than the handshakes, they didn't have to do that. Uh, and, And if they hadn't have done it, this business, I wouldn't have had anything to take over and, and certainly nothing to grow from. So having the right reinsurance partners is is absolutely critical for a UMA and and looking after those treasured relationships. Uh, Mm -hmm. We can't do what we do without them. Uh, And then the reinsurers have taken a lot of flack recently because Mm -hmm. every price increase is blamed on them. Yeah. Um, But, you know, there's a global market there that's driving all sorts of factors that often we don't understand. Um, So I think, yeah, having that... Um, that that backing of the reinsurers is really important, um, and and being able to tap into it, and and having access to 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 capital, you know, is mm. is a is a real blessing if if you have it, um, or having access to partners who have it if you don't have it. You know, yeah. I think that was, uh, you know, the last time I tried to start a business like this, um, it failed. Um, and and I, I wasn't alone when I started it, um, but it was certainly not an easy journey, you know. And and I and I remember the day that I sold my car <laughs> to to cover the expenses, um, and I was kind of like, okay, this is it. I'm going back into corporate, and I'm never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was t- and it, well, it took me 20 years <laughs> to get over that. 
you know. But but you do need to to think about those things, you know, like how long can you keep going, you know, and, and how long should you keep going before mm. you say, no, enough is enough. You know, when, when should you throw in the towel? Uh, I'm fortunate that I had that experience when I was young and I could recover from it. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I do think one needs that. You need to have that level of, of planning and you need to understand that if it's not working, you need to know when to walk away. A quick question, um, and, I, and it's something we have spoken about before, is the importance of a mentor or a business or life coach for you? What do you oh, comment on that? So important. Yeah, so important. Um, I've had a couple, you know. I mean, uh, you have informal mentorship arrangements and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I worked very well with with Gareth at at SHA at the time, and 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 he was a great mentor. I mean, you know, really he, he taught me a lot. Um, uh, but but I also had access to Ian Fur, um, who's the he was the founder of the Sorbet Group. Um, and Ian and I have become good friends. Um, we had a formal coaching arrangement uh, initially, and and now we're friends. Um, but. Yeah, it was through those conversations, you know, that I that I realized that, you know, uh, there's there's more to, I, I have more value to add, and and if I want to really maximize that, I'm probably going to have to do it on my own rather than in a corporate. Um, and then uh, I have a, another mentor uh, that I sort of discovered while I was uh, on gardening leave. It's Kashik Thucharan. Um, he's an associate professor professor at UCT um, in the in the MBA uh, program, and um, yeah, he he was just so amazing. You know, it was just like a, like so. I went from Ian, who's who's really like he's he's built businesses and you know he's bootstrapped it and he's had all of those challenges, and then and then the pleasure of of having somebody on the academic side. Yeah. You know, who could share all of these things that other people have have been through. Because uh, I, I really do think you don't need to have an MBA to start a business, you know, and, and there are lots of successful business people that didn't even go to university. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at least if you study or you got an academic connection, you can learn from other people's mistake. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to learn from your own, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's painful and it's probably longer. Um, so yeah, Kashik has been really great in in getting me to the to the point where where I knew what I needed to do in the liability company. So so absolutely, I've got mentees myself, and I love working with mm -hmm. them. And and I, I I don't put myself in the same category as as my two mentors yet. Um, but yeah, there's there's just so much to be gained from from those close ties and and the stories that we share. Simon, I, I I've got another ten questions, but I think we'll do a follow up interview. Um, it was absolutely great chatting to you. So many insights, uh, and I think lessons to learn for um for other people. So thank you for your time. Um, we've done a profile on on the liability company in the November edition of FA News. So that is online and in print. So go and have a look at that. Um, but it was great to chat to you. And I think the next time people will see you in action, hopefully, is um, on screen. So um, yeah. thank you for your time and, um, and all the best on this journey called the liability company. Thank you so much, Renate. This is Rianit Whitehead, if I news editor, signing off.